Hello, everyone. Right. So, yeah. so I would like to present our paper, Evo Learner, Learning Description Logics with Evolutionary Algorithms. So my name is Stefan Heinov, and I'm a postdoc in the DICE Research Group. And what I present here is joint work with Axel and Gonga and colleagues. Uh, so I would like to start with a brief introduction to knowledge graphs. So knowledge graphs are used to store structured knowledge with explicit semantics. They are used in all kinds of uh, systems like search engines and question answering systems in many applications like medicine and biology. So here on the right hand side, you can see an example. So if you ask Google who Joe Biden is, you will get such a quick answer box usually on the right hand side where it displays the most important information like the date of birth, the hate, uh, the, the party. And uh, where does all this data come from? It comes from the Google knowledge graph. You can see a small excerpt down here on the right hand side. So for example, Joe Biden held the position of president, which is a public office. Bernie Sanders held the position of a senator, which is also a public office. And Roger Federer plays sport. And there are all kinds of important machine learning tasks on such knowledge graphs, um, like predicting the missing types of entities, predicting which molecules cause cancer, predicting which drugs are promising treatment candidates. And in many of those applications, it's very important that domain experts can understand the explanations. So there are different methods to, to generate explainable uh, explanations. And in this work here, we focus on transparent models and on global explanations. So the advantage of global explanations is that there are not any contradictions, for example, in contrast to local explanations, which might contradict each other. And in particular, what we do in this work, we learn uh, concepts in description logics and use them for explanations. To, to give you an example, um, so for example, we would like to learn the concept of a politician. So we are given training data, who is a politician and who is not. So for example, here, Joe Biden is a politician, Roger Federer is not. And with this data, we can learn concepts in description logics. For example, we can learn that uh, somebody who holds a position of a public office is a politician. And then we can use this learned concept, uh, for example, to make uh, further uh, predictions. And it's also useful by domain experts to understand the predictions. Um, so for more formally, what we want to do is we want to learn concepts in description logics. So our input is a knowledge base K, which consists of a T box T and an A box A. And we are given positive and negative examples. So those are individuals in the knowledge base. And our output um, is a concept in description logics, in this case, over the description logic ALCQD. So that means we support uh, negation, we support intersection, we support union. Uh, cardinality restrictions and data properties. And um, to find such a concept in such a description logic, we use a maximize a fitness function. Um, the overall goal of the fitness function is that it should cover uh, many positive examples, few negative examples, and it should be rather short so that it generalizes well to new unseen data. We can find further information on our exact fitness function in our paper. And in this paper, we propose an approach based on evolutionary algorithms to learn those concepts. And um, we use genetic programming. So that means we represent each concept in description logic as an abstract syntax tree. And then we perform all those operations on those trees. So for example, for the initialization, we generate um, random trees, random concept in description logics, and then uh, we select the best of them uh, according to some, some fitness function. So for example, how many positive and negative examples are covered. So here measured in terms of F1 measure. And then we can perform some crossover and mutation operations. Uh, for example, in the crossover operation, uh, we can exchange two subtrees. 
uh, and in the mutation operation, we just randomly pick a subtree and slightly mutate it. And then again, we select the best individuals here. So such a repetition is called uh, a generation. And um, our main contributions in this paper are twofold. Um, so we propose a novel initialization method. So the idea is if we do the initialization here at the beginning very well, then we need much less generations later on. And what we do is we perform random walks on the knowledge graph and we convert them to description logic concepts. And we can show that this really improves uh, the performance a lot. And moreover, in many practical applications, data properties are very important. Uh, so we also add support for data properties in our approach. So to give you an example how a random walk initialization works. So here you can see an example of a knowledge graph. And um, the first step is we start at positive examples. So for example, per, uh, person one here is a positive example. And then we randomly select one of its types. So here we have male, grandfather, and father as its types. And here we randomly select male, for example. And then we go along the edges. Uh, so we randomly pick up to two outgoing edges here. So in this case, we pick the um, married edge and the has child edge so that we come to person two and person three in the graph. And we add those to our class expression here with an existential restriction. And then we go one step further in the knowledge graph. Um, from person one, we pick the type child. And from person two, we go to the person three via the has sibling relation and choose a type parent. And then you can see our final concept here in step three. Um, and what you actually our goal was to learn the concept of an uncle. So that means um, the first part here is correct. So an uncle is somebody who is male and is, is um, as might be married to somebody who has a sibling, the sibling is a parent, or the alternative might be that this person has a sibling who is a parent. So actually the, the last part here is not quite correct yet here, this has child uh, dot child uh, part of the theory, but um, this can be further improved during the evolutionary algorithm by performing some crossover or mutation operations. Um, so this is our random walk initialization. And then we added support for data properties. Uh, so the basic idea is borrowed from um, uh, decision trees. And what we do is uh, for each data property, we pre-compute some splits which maximize information gain. Uh, in our experiments, we choose a number uh, 10. So for each data property, we pre-compute up to 10 splits. And for example, this is done as, as shown in the picture down here. Uh, so if we are given some positive and negative examples, then the question is how to best compute the threshold here, denoted VI, uh, so that we can re uh, reduce the entropy. For example, here in the, on the right-hand side, the set ER, there are almost only green dots only positive example, so there's a low entropy. So that's our goal to split it in a way um, that we uh, reduce the entropy as, as much as, as possible. Um, so we do this for, for each data properties, compute up to K splits, and then the evolutionary algorithm can use those splits and randomly pick them during the process. So for example, during the mutation operations. Um, so we compared then our approach to state-of-the-art concept learners. Uh, for example, quite famous is the approach DL learner originally developed by Jens Lehmann. So the idea here is that it's an inductive logic programming approach and it uses refinement operators. So it starts at the most general concept thing and then step-by-step step refines the concept. 
Um, in, in contrast, our approach is more a bottom-up approach because we look at the instance data and perform the random walks on the instance data. So um, it's, it's kind of the opposite approach. Um, then we also compare our approach to Aleph. It's an inductive logic programming approach written in Prolog and uh, Spatial, uh, which focuses on parallelism and learning uh, concepts with, with, yeah, in parallel. And what you can see here, if you do a pairwise comparison of Evo Learner with each of the other approaches, so we outperform each approach on at, at least seven out of nine data sets. Um, so we use the uh, data sets here from the SML bench, benchmark. It's a benchmark for structured machine learning. And um, for example, to give you on the here on the demographic data set, Evo Learner achieves. Um, of one measure of 0.81, where, whereas DL learner only 0 0.64. Um, so we were wondering why our approach performed so well, and we performed an ablation study. Um, so for example, what we did, we left out our random work initialization, and we replaced it with a traditional genetic programming initialization called ramt half half where the trees are just comp generated completely randomly without taking a look at the knowledge graph. Um, and in this case, the performance considerably dropped. So this random work initialization seems to be quite important. Um, we also left out our support for data properties. And what you can see is that um, it differs a little bit by data sets. So for some data sets, data properties are not so important. Uh, whereas for other data sets, data properties are very important. So for example, the mutagenesis data set here, um, performance drops a lot without data properties. Um, then we also uh, investigated how fast our approach is compared to the state of the art. Um, so here we evaluated the performance after running the approach for a certain number of seconds. Um, and what you can see is here that after only five or 10 seconds, Evo Learner uh, achieves very good results, whereas other approaches take much longer to achieve the same performance. And what's also interest interesting to note here is that if you look at the second to zero, so this is directly after our initialization. So only performing the random walks without any um, evolutionary algorithm. And what you can see here that we are already very good directly after the initialization. Um, you can find all our code and data on GitHub. So there are two GitHub repositories. One is EvoLearner. This is can you can use directly to reproduce all the results reported in the paper. And we also integrated this algorithm into our library OntoLearn. And this OntoLearn library and, uh, contains many algorithms to learn, uh, to do concept learning on knowledge graphs. So there's also a re-implementation of Silo, for example, contained and, and many other algorithms. You might uh, take a look at this. Um, yeah, to, so to summarize, so we uh, contributed a novel initialization method based on random walks. We added support for data properties based on information gain. Um, we can conclude that Evo Learner significantly outperforms the state of the art approaches. And uh, our ablation study shows that this is due to our initialization method and support for data properties. And um, in future work, one idea is to combine our approach with knowledge graph embedding. So, for example, to guide the random walks in a promising direction and um, to increase the expressivity to the full. OWL to a full standard. Um, so this brings me to the end, and I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you, Stefan. Um, and I don't know if um, any of the participants have questions. Do add them to the to, to the chat. I wanted to to ask one and perhaps two questions if we have time. The first one is quite generic and sort of goes back a little bit to the um, um, comments that the reviewers had about, about the paper, about um, the motivation of the work, uh, particularly in the context of 
prevalence of um, open world reasoning languages like like description logics versus more closed world um, paradigms. Um, would you would you care to comment about this? So, so how what is the potential impact of the work, and and how what would you say in your opinion is the 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 importance of of, of families of languages like description log, uh, logics in, in in knowledge graphs today? Yeah, sure. So in this work, we mainly focus on on closed world reasoning, mm -hmm. as was done previously in many other approaches. So all the baselines that I mentioned, all those, uh, they also use closed world reasoning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so in principle, it would be easy to um, change it to open world reasoning. For example, we in the background, we use a library already too. And it would basically be one line of code to change it to, to open world reasoning. Um, mm -hmm. but, but it has some, some drawbacks. So it's significantly slower, for example, uh, by a factor of at least 20. So mm -hmm. that means we can check much fewer class expressions, for example, in the same amount of time. And um, on the other hand, there seems to be a certain trend towards closed world reasonings. For example, the new Shackle standard uses closed world reasoning, and it seems to be much more intuitive for many uh, practitioners, which are come maybe from the database community, and, and they are very familiar with closed world reasoning. So, so those are some of the reasons why we focus here on closed world reasoning. Okay. Uh, that's 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 great. Thank you for clarifying that. And my second question is um, looking at the choice of data sets that you have picked. Um, so you've mentioned um, some, some some benchmarks, but I was wondering if you could just summarize very briefly the um, rationales for for picking these um, um, learning problems. Um, um, and, and how they basically demonstrate that the approach generalizes to a, a wide range of scenarios. Yeah, thanks for the question. So we picked exactly the data sets from the SML bench framework. Okay. So that, that's a benchmarking framework. It already existed before. So those are exactly the learning problems from this framework. Uh -huh. So this just okay. allows easier comparison. Mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry for that. I, I thought I thought somehow I misunderstood. I thought you picked some uh, tasks from the benchmark, but not all of them. But if that's already standardized, even even better. Thank you very much for that, Stefan. 